hello friends so in this video i am going to show you how to design a gearbox here i am going to design a 9 speed gearbox for which i will explain you the step by step procedure to design it actually this topic is mainly for the mechanical engineers but whoever having the curiosity to know the design procedure of gearbox can watch this video so in this video what are the things that i am going to explain you are first determine the problem statement because before designing the gearbox you should know the minimum and the maximum speed on the basis of which you are going to design your gearbox second one is calculation of step ratio which is also called as gear ratio or spindle speed ratio and comparing the step ratio with the standard step ratio which is given in the phd college of design data book third step is calculation and comparison of speed with design data book fourth one is structural formula and ray diagram fifth step is kinematic arrangement of gears and last step which is sixth step is determine the number of teeth on each gears so these are the topics which i am going to explain you in this video so to design a gearbox our first step is determine the problem statement this is what the problem statement that i have taken for designing my gearbox actually i find out this problem statement after trying many different problem statement and after making many mistakes i find out this problem statement which is fulfilling all the criteria for designing the gearbox so this is what the problem statement here my minimum speed is 150 rpm and maximum speed is 2400 rpm and number of speed is 9 so our second step is calculation of step ratio which is also called as spindle speed ratio or gear ratio so to calculate the step ratio we actually use geometric progression we don't use arithmetic or harmonic progression because in that progression we don't get step ratio constant at each step due to which there is sudden increase in speed which may leads to failure of our gear that's why we use geometric progression which give us constant step ratio so to calculate the step ratio the formula that we use is maximum speed speed upon minimum speed raised to 1 upon n minus 1 where n is number of speed so after calculating the step ratio we got 1.4142 now we are going to compare our step ratio with standard step ratio which is given in design data book of phd college so this is what the page that is 7.20 from the design data book of phd college and here you can see that these are the step ratio which is given in the column under borderline see that is step ratio 1.6 1.25 1.12 1.06 1 and whatever the number given in the rows of the particular standard step ratio are the speeds okay now here we are going to compare our calculated step ratio with this standard step ratio multiple of this standard step ratio so when we compare our calculated step ratio with multiple of standard step ratio 1.6 we got 2.56 which is greater than 1.4142 that's why we are not using this standard step ratio we move for the second one that is 1.25 it's multiple coming as 1.5625 which is also greater than 1.4142 that's why we are not using this also when we go for the 1.12 then we are getting 1.4049 which is nearby to 1.4142 now to get the more similarity with the standard step ratio we are going to check for 1.06 and its multiple is coming as 1.4185 which is almost near to the 1.4142 that's why we are going to use this standard step ratio that is 1.06 and the speed which is given in this row that is row 40 so these are what the speeds for the standard step ratio that is 1.06 okay now in this video i am also going to explain you how to read how to compare our calculated speed and take the standard speed that is also i am going to show you in this video so here we got our standard step ratio now calculation of speeds here i have calculated these speeds on the basis of step ratio that is 1.4142 so these are what my calculated speeds my minimum speed is 150 and my maximum speed is coming as 2399.81 which is nothing but 2400 rpm so here after calculating the speeds we are going to compare our speed with the standard speeds so here we are going to compare our calculated speed with standard speeds so this is what the design data book and during comparison of calculated step ratio with standard step ratio that is 1.06 we multiplied 1.06 six time to get that calculated step ratio that that's why we are going to check our speeds also after the 6 interval and our minimum speed is starting from 1.50 that is 150 rpm so check in the column that is row 40 check where is 1.50 here you can see that 1.50 is given so you can multiply these numbers with any multiple of 10 or the 100 to get your minimum speed so here my minimum speed is 150 after leaving six intervals we are getting 
150 take 150 as 1 then 160 170 180 190 200 that is here we are getting our second speed as 2.12 that is 212 rpm and after leaving the six interval from 2.12 here we are getting as 300 as our third speed then after leaving six interval from 300 we are getting as our next speed as 4.25 that is 425 rpm which is our fourth speed now after leaving this six interval from 4.25 that is 425 rpm we are getting as 600 for our next speed that is fifth speed then after leaving this six interval from 600 we are getting as 8.50 as our next as sixth speed after 8.50 that is 850 rpm as our sixth speed after leaving the six interval means take 850 as first 900 as second 950 as third 10 as fourth interval and one is also taken as the fourth interval only and 1.06 at a fifth interval and 1.12 as our sixth interval so after leaving the sixth interval that is 1.12 we are getting as 1180 as our seventh speed so 1.18 that is 1180 rpm as our seventh speed so after leaving the sixth interval from 1.18 we are getting as 1.70 that is 1700 rpm as our eighth speed and after leaving the sixth interval from 1.70 that is 1700 rpm we are getting as 2360 that is 2360 rpm as our ninth speed so here our maximum speed is 2360 rpm and in similar way when we select our all standard speed we got these as our standard speed first one is 150 second speed is 212 rpm third one is 300 rpm fourth one is 425 fifth one is 600 850 1700 and at last which is the maximum standard speed that is 2360 but when we calculated our speeds that is coming as 2400 rpm so here you might be worried that you have taken your maximum speed as 2400 and getting as 2360 rpm so here there is nothing to be bothered because 2360 is also going to work for your gearbox if it satisfy all the criteria for designing the gearbox that you are going to see further now to check that 2360 really exists for the design of gearbox or not so to check that here we are going to check the deviation so this is what the formula for checking the deviation that is plus minus 10 psi minus 1 percentage so here our allowable deviation is coming between minus 4.142 to plus 4.142 if our actual deviation coming between this range that is minus 4.142 to plus 4.142 then our selected standard speeds are okay for designing the gearbox so here we are going to check our actual deviation for checking actual deviation the formula is maximum actual speed that we are getting from the design data book minus actual speed that we have taken as our problem statement into minimum speed upon maximum speed that we have taken in the problem statement so after calculating the actual deviation it is coming as minus 2.5 5, which is coming in the range of plus minus 4.142 which shows that our maximum standard speed that we are getting from the design data book are suitable for designing the gearbox now the fourth step is structural formula and the ray diagram so this is what the structural formula for nine number of speed so how to find out the structural formula so whatever the number of speed that you have taken for designing the gearbox find out the smallest factor of that number of speed so for nine number of speed the its smallest factor is three into three so whatever the number you are getting outside the bracket here those are nothing but the factors and whatever the number you are getting inside the bracket that are going to act as an input speed so after getting the factor arrange those factor in the descending order and after arranging it multiply the first factor by one and whatever the product you are getting put that product in the second bracket so here our product is coming as three into one as three so i put that three in the second bracket and when you take a product of three into three it is going to come as nine so our number of speed is nine so in this manner the structural formula is going to be find out 
for example for 12 number speed the smallest factor is 3 to 2 i have arranged it in descending order and i multiplied the first factor by 1 and its product is came as 3 and i put that product in the second bracket and its product is coming as 6 and i put that product in the third bracket and when i multiply 2 into 6 it's coming as 12 that is 12 number of speed so in that manner we used to find out the structural formula now the next step is ray diagram so this is what is structure for the ray diagram here i have taken three shafts these are the three shafts and these are the stages means here the matting of the gears takes place so these are the stages okay and here i have drawn nine lines for representing the number of speeds okay and here you can observe that 3 into 1 and 3 into 3 means at stage 1 a single input is going to be divided into three different speed means one input is going to be split into three different speed and at stage two that three different speed is going to be split into nine different speed means each input speed is going to be split into three different speed these numbers also represent that the three speeds are also going to be represented at the interval of one at the second stage the each uh, speed is going to be represented at the interval of 3 means after leaving the distance of 3 second speed is going to be represented so here i will show you how to represent the ray diagram and we actually start the drawing of ray diagram from the last stage so to draw the ray diagram we actually start from the minimum speed here our minimum speed is 150 rpm so take it as 150 rpm and our second speed is going to be represented after a distance of 3 means leaving the 150, 212 and 300 rpm our second speed is going to be 425 rpm and after leaving the 3 distance from the 425 and third speed is 1180 rpm and now after representing these 3 speeds now we need to decide the input for these 3 speeds so always remember that Whenever you are going to take input speed for this represented speed, always take greater than the middle part means here 425 is coming at the middle part. So always prefer to take greater than that middle number means 425. So here I am assuming my 600 as our input speed. So I have taken that 600 as my input speed for this 3 output speed and for the input at the first stage always prefer the highest number of speed. Here I am taking 1700 as my highest number of speed as an input at the first stage. And after drawing the ray diagram for the first input, check this criteria whether it is going to be fulfilled by the input and the maximum speed that you have taken or not. Means the minimum speed that is 150 rpm if it is divided by the input that you have taken as 600 if it satisfied that if it is coming greater than or equal to 0 0.25 and if the maximum speed that you have taken 1180 if it divided by the input speed that is 600 and if it is coming as less than or equal to 2 then the input speed that you have taken is satisfying the criteria and it is ok for designing the gearbox. If it is not satisfying then you should modify your problem statement or the number of speed that you have assumed here as an as your input. So here after calculation it is satisfying the criteria for designing the gearbox. Now we move for the second input. So here this is what the first input that we have taken now for the second input. So here I have taken the second input after the interval of 3 and for these 3 speeds represented by yellow color I have taken as 850 rpm and for the first stage the same input is going to be remain as it is and here after checking the criteria that is this criteria if it is fulfilling this criteria then your second input is also going to be ok for designing the gearbox. So after calculating it is satisfying the criteria that is the minimum and the maximum speed when divided by the input speed that we have assumed it is coming in the criteria that is minimum speed is coming as 0.2495 which is nothing but 0.25 which is greater or equal to 0.25 and the maximum speed is coming as equal to 2. So second input is also fulfilling the criteria for designing the gearbox. So now move for the third step. Here also when I represent the remaining speed after the interval of 3, here I assumed 1180 as my input speed. Okay, here one thing to be remember that you can take any speed greater than the middle part means here my middle part is for the speed represented by the green, 850 is my middle speed. So here you can take that 900, 1000 as your input speed and check for the criteria that whether it is satisfying the flowing criteria or not. And the input at the first stage remain the same. Okay. 
now here i am going to check whether the speed represented by the green are satisfying this criteria or not so here after checking it is satisfying the criteria here you can see that it's mean that whatever the speed that i have taken it is satisfying and the suitable for designing the gearbox now after representing the all speeds the red diagram is going to be look like as like this and here i am going to check this criteria for the first stage and after checking that it is also satisfying the criteria that is this criteria for designing the gearbox it means that my total assumed input speeds are satisfying the criteria and suitable for designing the gearbox now after completion of ray diagram and structural formula our fifth step is kinematical diagram of the gears so this is what the kinematical diagram for the gear and here i will show you how the speeds going to be come so when your 3 and 4 gear are meshing then at the second stage if your 11 and 12 gear is going to be mesh then you are going to get 300 as your output speed and if 9 and 10 is going to be mesh then you are going to get 2360 means you are going to get the maximum speed and when the 7 and 8 are in meshed position then you are going to get 850 as your output speed similarly when the 5 and 6 at the first stage are in the meshing position then at the second stage if 11 and 12 are in the meshing position then you are going to get 150 as your output speed if 9 and 10 are in the meshing at the second stage then you are going to get 1180 rpm as your output speed and if 7 and 8 are in the meshing position then you are going to get 425 rpm as your output speed so in this manner the speed are going to be split and going to be act as output speed now the last step that is the sixth step is determine the number of teeth on each gear so always remember that whenever you are going to design the ray diagram or the finding the number of teeth always start from the last stage so here at the last stage the smallest gear is 11 so i am going to assume the number of teeth for this gear as 20 so here at the uh, second stage 11 and 12 are going to give you the minimum speed for each input so here the gear which is numbered as 11 is going to act as pinion and the gear which is numbered as 12 is going to act as gear so here i am uh, selecting these two gear which is giving me the least in output means the minimum output here I am assuming the number of teeth for the pinion as 20. So for calculating the teeth, the formula is ZP upon ZG equal to NG upon NP means number of teeth on pinion upon number of teeth on gear equal to speed of gear upon speed of pinion. Okay, so after calculating, so here I got the number of teeth for gear 12 that is Z12 is 80. Now for the number of teeth 9 and 10 the same formula you have to use for finding the number of teeth now here i am getting the number of teeth for 9 is equal to 1.967 into number of teeth on 10 and in the similar manner i am getting the number of teeth for 7 and 8 also so after calculating and comparing the number of speed at the second stage it is going to be represented like this so after uh, calculation the number of teeth for the gear number 7 is 29 gear number 8 is 71 gear number 9 is 66 for gear number 10 it is coming as 34 and for gear number 11 it is coming as 20 and for gear number 12 it is coming as 80 and so in this way we got the number of teeth for each gear at the second stage now to find out the number of teeth for this gear at stage 1 the same thing you have to follow first assume the gear which is giving you the minimum speed now here at the first stage the meshing position of 5 and the 6 is going to give you the minimum speed so here i assumed the number of teeth for pinion that is gear number 5 is equal to 20 so after calculating with the help of formula here i am getting the number of speed for the uh, gear 6 is 57 so in the similar manner i am getting the number of speed for the uh, 3 and the 4 gear and similarly for the first and the second gear so after calculating and comparing the number of teeth at the stage 1 here i am getting the number of teeth for the gears at the stage 1 so these are what the number of teeth for the gears at stage 1 and in this way we can find out the number of teeth for each gears at the first stage and the second stage so this is what the number of teeth for each gear and here we complete the procedure to design the gearbox so whenever if you find it difficult to understand anything just let me know in the comment hope this video will help you to understand the criteria to design the gearbox so let's see in the next video till then take care